Well hello folks, this time it's a Stereo Master 2330. The 2330 and the 23300 are the same one, but uh, the 23300 has a mono radio and the 2330, which is this one, has the stereo decoder fitted. Inside here we've got a BSR deck, which is pretty well seized like they tend to be. And we'll just tip it on its side and I'll show you where the model number label is. Okay, so we have the 2330 label there. For those of you who need to know where the model number is, it's not printed on the bottom, nor is it on the amplifier ventilation panel. I'll just slide it round if you just want to zoom out, Mr C. And let's have a look at the chassis here. Now, this has been bought off eBay, and we were told there was a nasty hum when you switch it on. We're not going to switch it on, because we're going to be changing some of these capacitors in the workshop first. So, have we got that on camera? Mm -hmm. Good. That one, that one, that one, that one, and all those nasty black ones, which are, are there. Um, they're a particular make, um, Hunts and Kaling, I think it is. And they're absolutely notorious. There's also one on the power supply. It's a regulated power supply on this model. And if we can just see one of the speakers slightly, I don't know if we can. The last video was on the last stereo master they did, which was the 2419. And we had to change the loudspeakers. In this model, the speakers have always been okay. Um, I've probably had about, um, I think we've had 28 of these through. And we never had Dove speakers in them. So what we're going to do is to proceed with servicing the record player unit, which will be very much the same as what we did on the 2419. So what we need to do is to take this uh, little finisher off first, and we usually can just get a small screwdriver under there. There we go. Lift up the overarm. And then we're left with the circlet there, which we can just pop off. That's the circlip off. See how stiff and tight that is. No, it's lifted straight off. So that's the platter. It's a metal platter on this one. And the first thing we need to do is to remove the spindle. Well, that came out easily, didn't it? That is absolutely seaside. I can hardly move it, and this will be typical. And the trigger for the auto uh, return is pretty stiff there as well. So we'll get that circlip off for a start. Might have to apply heat to this and just pause the camera. Yeah, we will. So we'll just pause that. So we've just applied some heat and that's now quite warm. We need to remove the grease and the grease from there. And meanwhile, I'll also be taking the auto return bit off. Just pop the circlip off that. Clean the lubricant off that and renew. So we'll be back when we've done that and remove that bit of grease there. While I'm at it, I'm going to take the. I'm going to lubricate this um, centre bearing as well. So I've been cleaning up the record player compartment and and so on, uh, whilst lubricating the various bits. Now the snag sometimes you come up with with these, is that you can't get this to fit into the cam. And this is one of these where we're going to have to put a loop of wire and just pull that a little bit so that it fits into the cam and then release the wire like that. So simple as that. And there's a dog hair there which has just been overlooked. So having done that, the next thing to do, that's all back and working nice and freely and so is that, is just to pop the circlip off the idler There's a fibre washer, so you don't want to be losing that fibre washer, which is, comes off the top. There's a fibre washer underneath, we're going to remove that so we can lubricate this properly. And so we're going to be lubricating that, we're going to 
make sure that is clear. We're going to clean the idler with isopropyl alcohol. We're going to clean the motor. There's a step motor thing for the various speeds there. And then pop that back together. So we've, um, we've cleaned all this off and we'll put the first fibre washer back. And then the idler. And the second fibre washer. And the circlip. I'll just hold that with some paper so just in case I've got any oil on my fingers. And that's now quite nicely freely running. So clean around the rim there with isopropyl alcohol just to get any greasiness off. And hopefully this will pop back on. I'll tell you what, we'll just clean that while it's off the uh, record player. So that's the turntable back uh, together and that's now freely moving. What we're going to do is just clean up this uh, centre spindle and put a bit of um, lubricant on. I'm tending to use the, because uh, certainly this is applies to the UK uh, use. So I'll tell you what we tend to do, we tend to use WD-40 to get the grease off and we tend to use uh, the three-in-one oil to, uh, to put it, uh, some lubricant back on. I don't believe in putting grease on those um, cams because it only messes up in a few years. We do have light grease available, but uh, I, this is for um, my colleague, uh, Mr. C. So um, I think we're better off using the, uh, the oil. We can't power this up yet without taking the fuse out for the amplifier, because I do not want the amplifier to be powered up because we know it's faulty. Okay, so that's the record turntable put back together. So I'm not gonna power it up. I was gonna pop the fuse out of the amplifier, but without the service manual to hand, I couldn't just spot where the fuses are. So I'm just going to make sure it kind of works and I'll just put it through to auto and just spin it by hand. There we go, yeah that's fine. So in the next part of the video we'll have the amplifier out and on the bench and we'll go through changing those capacitors. So we'll look forward to doing that in about two weeks time. So there's no grass growing around this uh, job. It's uh, for a member of staff here.